Hello, Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman, and over there is Christopher Drives. What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website, HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. Well, you're on the internet. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, we have 49 subscribers. Please get that up, please. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you get notified every time we upload a video. Everblade fans, uh, hook us up. Um, also hit like and follow over there on Facebook from Milwaukee to Nashville. You can find us or you can look up me, Daniel Goodema, or him, Christopher Drives, for all your hockey info. For, also, wait, on what platform? Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. Uh, me at Ed's Fan Dad uh, 45 and Chris Jeffrey Draves at Chris Dash Under Dash Draves 85. That's my Twitter handle, yeah. See, I have it all down. Boom, <laughs> oh, that's sad. I don't remember my own Twitter handle, I just know I'm on Twitter. Um, also, I don't other tweet news- a lot, but I do retweet a lot of info because that's where I get a lot of my info from. Uh, I follow important people on Twitter. Also, I would like to wish our best wishes as our former captain, uh, Jared Tenorni, got hit pretty hard in a boarding call. Pretty um, hard. That's an understatement. Oof, uh, it was Brandon Tenev will probably be under player safety tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he, he's got a suspension coming, definitely. He got a five-minute boarding and a game misconduct for hitting him. Uh, Tenardi did not move. Uh, the play did have to be forced to be stopped, and he was helped off the ice. Um, with that was being, he stretchered off or just helped off? Helped off. Okay. That's a good thing. If he's stretchered off, that's way worse. Way worse. One of the one of the big things for us is we always care about guys whether or not they're still in our system. We grew we we watched these guys grow from young players. And yeah, Tenardi was our captain here in Milwaukee for the Admirals. Two years. Yeah. So with us, for us, it was it, it is really hard when you see a guy who worked so hard just to get there to see this happen. It it, it is really hard to see. But with all the doom and gloom out of the way, let's get in this game. Oh, uh, you're not going to talk about Taylor Hall getting popped in the face by a puck today, or is that just common occurrence? Oh, yeah. Uh, What about that uh, Russian kid that passed away this morning? Okay, there was a player in the KHL. He took a slap shot and broke a temple, temple orbital bone, basically the bone right here, pushed back into his head. And he um, passed away this morning at the age of 19. He played for the MHL. Uh, what is that? SKA St. Petersburg, I think. Basically it was. where uh, uh, Askarov is right now. Yeah, so rest in peace. Our condolences to his, him and his family, or his family, I should say. Uh, from out, out, from reports from from the media there, uh, the family had released a statement stating that his options were um, risk moving him because the hospital he was at couldn't do the surgery they needed to do, uh-huh. and if they moved him, there was a chance he was going to die at anyway. Because yeah, I wish I remember the condition. kid's name, but nineteen is too early to go. Yeah, I'll start reading the stats if you want to look into that kid's name. But, yeah, he passed away this morning at the age of 19. I saw that early this morning, and I had to share it in our little group chat we got. All right, we get the Everblades and the Orlando Solar Bears today for the 1800th meeting of the season. All right, in the first period, Florida outshot Orlando 11-7. to And then – uh. They outshot Orlando 16-10 in the second, and they also outshot Orlando 10-8 in the third for a total of 37-25 to in favor of the Everblades. This first period was boring. It really was. There was like two penalties. Logan Rowe, he got hit with uh, hooking, and then uh, – what is it? Uh, Ted Cozen. He got hit for a uh, tripping. Like I said, it was just a boring first period. All right, all right, Dan, you could do the second period if all you're right. ready. All right. Also, that player, he was a defenseman. His name was Timor Fezadonov. I'm sorry if I I butchered it. I have never had to 
I didn't I didn't get the luxury of hearing how it was pronounced, but uh, Timur uh, Fazutnadov. Fazutnadov. Like I said, we're sorry that we butchered his name. We're not trying to disrespect him. We're trying to show our respect because it's never good to hear of a hockey player at that age passing away. It's never good. He was 19. That kid was so young. He was playing in the minor leagues of the KHL. He was in the NHL, not KHL. He was in the, he was in the junior. Uh, he was bouncing back and forth between the minors and the juniors of, of over in Russia, which you can do at the age of 16, yeah. all the way to the age of 22. So, yeah, he was 19 early in his career, and unfortunately this happens. Hockey's uh, a rough sport, man. It is. Um, you know, uh, for those um, – this is a rare occurrence it doesn't happen all that much that's, that's why, why the, we're talking about it the equipment is made nowadays to protect from things like this to be happening why yeah. when when you lose your bucket aka your helmet you can you cannot be on the ice you actually have to go off the ice or you get a two minute delay a game penalty yeah because they're trying to protect players because they know it's a dangerous game so and I don't even know exactly how he got hit or what exactly happened. I just know he took Casey. a slap shot from the neutral zone and it pegged him right in the middle of the head. Yeah, but was he wearing a helmet or no helmet? It got under it. Oh, somehow. he wasn't wearing a visor or anything. The visor uh, broke on the shot and it, it went through it. Okay, yeah, you can't prevent anything like that. Man. Those visors ain't bulletproof. Um, no, um. So scoring in the second, in the second period, yeah, was uh, your captain John McCarron with an assist by Blake Winicky and Logan Rowe. McCarron is now tied in the ECHL among scoring with Michael Huttenbrinker. Breaking news: Michael Huttenbrinker is good at hockey. In the second period, we had a tripping call by Tad Cozen, uh, call uh, caused by Tad Cozen. And yep. a interference called by Leif Kokoper. Uh, that was about it there. Uh, in the third period, we had Max Cook getting his first pro goal. Way to go, kid. Yeah. With an assist by Colby Sissons and Michael Hudsonbreaker. Colby uh, Sissons is actually getting on the score sheet a lot lately. I like by the way, it. it's way to way to go, uh, Everblades commentary guy. It is Colby Sissons, not Colton Sissons. <laughs> Um, but then again, you know, we make we make mistakes, too, so I can't. Judge. Yeah, we can't rip you too much. Nope. I, I would have made that mistake eventually anyway. But yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, then scoring at the 1620 or 1612 mark as an empty net. It was Hugo Wall with an assist by Leif Kokoper and Matt Petgrave. Um, your... yeah, also in the third period, Orlando thought they had a goal. It was originally two to one, but the referees waved it off because they committed an interference. Yeah. All right. So with that being said, let's talk about power play. Power play. Oh for two for Florida. Oh for three for Orlando. Six penalty minutes for Florida. Four for Orlando. Um, total points that Florida had was nine. They had three goals, six assists. Yeah, it was a pretty uneventful game tonight. I mean, I'm happy uh, Hildebrand did what he did and got the shutout, but, yeah, it was pretty uneventful if you look at it. Clint Windsor had 34 saves on 36 shots with two goals against. Uh, uh, Hildebrand had, uh, well, a shutout, stopping all 25 <laughs> and 25 for his second in three games. Yeah. Um, also, congratulations, Hildebrand, on play at goalie of the week. Oh, yeah. Again, that's like his, what, second or third time this year? Yes. Also, uh, your three stars of the game were uh, Max Cook. He uh, was the third star. John McCarron, your captain, two, second star. The first star of the game with the shutout is Hildebrand. Attendance at the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida. It was 2,250. Um, upcoming next for us is a day off. Yes. Uh, by the Ooh, way, tomorrow, day off. Yeah, by the way, folks, tomorrow from us at From Milwaukee to Nashville, we know it's St. Patty's Day. Please drink responsibly or Wisconsinably. Uh, drink or, at home, people. Just get your liquor, drink at home. It's a lot safer. And you won't spread COVID. 
Um, so, uh, um, just so you guys can all remember, I'm not drunk. I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's too much blood in our alcohol system. Not the other <laughs> way around. Uh, we we do have fun here. So, um, yeah, for you Florida people, Wisconsin, it's mostly a bunch of drunks. <laughs> it is. We like having fun though. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and most of our fun revolves around liquor, country bars, and football. <laughs> I love that football. But we will see you guys later. Um, you guys will be seeing us tomorrow unless breaking, breaking news happens. Breaking news happens. Hopefully, if it breaks, it's a good story, not a bad story. I but do not like, want to start our show off with bad news like we did tonight. But like I said, I wanted to wish uh, Tenor Jared Tenorti, Taylor Hall, a uh, uh, quick healing. And I wanted to give our condolences to this young player from Russia. Yeah, his family good. just lost their son, and nobody should ever have to deal with that. Most kids should have to bury their parents, not, not parents the other way around. Exactly. exactly. So we will see you guys in a couple days. Be safe, people. Happy St. Patrick's Day. See, I'm rocking the green, too. <laughs> see y'all. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Off for me to go figure out how I'm going to watch Dropkick Murphy's live concert on uh, uh, tomorrow. All right.